Welcome back to this two-part mini-series on the game Pokey Poke that I made for GM48 Game Jam in January. In this second part I'm going to talk about the jam more generally, how I came up with the idea, where I decided to take it, and reflect on a few of the choices I made. If you're interested in more of the technical side of how the game was put together, check out the first part in the description. So the theme of the jam was one tool, many uses. The first thing that always comes to mind for me with this theme is dual purpose design, and specifically it's use in games like Downwell. Mark Brown did an excellent video on Downwell and this design approach, which comes down to the elegance derived from single tools and mechanics that have many different uses. So this was the most appealing way for me to interpret this theme, a single mechanic that has as many potential in-game uses as possible. I'd also been playing a ton of Mario Odyssey, an incredible game that in fairly typical Nintendo style also uses a whole lot of multi-purpose design. My favourite transform in the game was the Pokio, a bird creature with a rapidly extending razor-sharp beak. The beak allowed you to climb and fling your way around levels, pierce the armour of tough enemies, and also redirect heavy rolling bombs. All using the same mechanic and even the same button. I wasn't alone in thinking an entire game could have been made about just this transform. So in short, I decided to make that game. Normally it takes me a lot longer to settle on something for a jam. I often create like a mind map of different ways to interpret the theme, and settle on maybe the third or fourth idea that really resonated with me or that I really liked. But this time I happened to already have an idea that fit, and the theme helped just refine its direction even further, so I went with it. I decided to work in 2D because that's my strength, and I'm reimagining Pokio as a 2D platformer. So rather than do the bending and flipping of Pokio's climbing, I went for a simpler jump poke jump style instead. No fancy reasoning there other than that it was simpler, and in 48 hours, simple is a very valuable quality for a mechanic. And as I briefly mentioned in the last video, since I knew that I was going to derive all of the mechanics and gameplay from just this poking behaviour, I decided early on that this was going to be where I put most of my time, making the poking and movement feel good and feel powerful probably the hardest and most important thing to do in a modern action game. I realised pretty quickly into day one that refining the physics of this spear stuff, which continues to be the priority now for the game, even after the game jam is finished, is more than enough work for the whole two days and more meaning that implementing lots of other essential things is going to take a bit of a back seat. Since GM48 allows you to work in teams, I decided to reach out over Twitter to see if anyone was interested in helping me do the art for the game. Ink Splat reached back and saved me a ton of time in making all of the artwork for the game, and also made it way way better than I possibly could have done. One of the first things he did was make a character to replace my pink blob man, although I demanded that we keep his ridiculous smile. This was a silly but also kind of quick and simple way to help really exude an intrinsic sense of joy and a for the fun of it tone that I really wanted in the jam game. I wasn't thinking about a longer term design than that, because I just wanted to make the best jam game possible. It's not right or wrong to do it this way, it depends on your goals, and for me at the time the prize was always the product of the jam, rather than a launching pad for a newer longer game, even though that is what this ended up doing. Also over Twitter, Rologfoss reached out to me and offered to do the music and sound for the game, which was fantastically helpful. My musical skill is even more lacking than my art skill, and many of my jam games release without any music at all. It's the biggest hole in my skill set by far, and so that not only bridged that gap and allowed the game to actually have some sound, but also the music was just really good! Lesson here is that teamwork is awesome. So other than the physics, the art and the sound, the other important thing was to get that multi-purpose design really coming through in the game. I wanted as much as possible to come from just stabbing and throwing the spear. My ideas for that were ranging from walls you can bounce off rather than stick to, moving objects you could grab onto, smashable walls, the bombs from Pokio, and those are just the things that actually got done. Sadly, implementing these took the last few hours of the jam, so they're hardly really explored at all. The moving targets that you can grab only show up in a single spot, for example. I still think it was really worth putting the time in to get these in, as they were really fundamental to the whole idea. Without them, you were just climbing, and the whole idea was many uses for the tool, so that was really important for me to get in. The most important thing after that was the level design. I decided early on against doing a big sequence of levels, and opted to create an open world to explore. First of all, this was quickest, I didn't have to worry about transitions, and I could build the world as I went but also let me create an ungated world not dissimilar from that of VVVVV, where every challenge is available to you out of the gate, and you can choose when to tackle each one and when to come back to others. Where all of this falls down though is that I really only made the bulk of the world in the last half an hour or so of the jam, and had no time to really test much of any of it beyond making sure it kind of worked. 
I wasn't even sure some of the stars were even possible to get by the deadline. I remember literally two minutes before the deadline, I was still adding to the world, I ran the game, played through it once, and just submitted it. Like, I didn't, I, I didn't really get to test it or uh, uh, iterate on the world any more than that. The game also lacked any kind of tutorial, which is a big problem for any game, but this created a really big intrinsic problem for this game, in that the two main mechanics are actually used for very similar things. Throwing and stabbing both allow you to climb, and both destroy obstacles and both affect bombs, so when the player finds one of them by experimentation, they often don't find the other. Players only tend to experiment when they think that they actually need to. Many players therefore ended up taking forever to realise that they could also stab, or that they could also throw, because they had no reason to assume the other mechanic existed, where most things appear theoretically possible with either one. This issue is obviously compounded by not having any tutorial or guidance in the game at all, but it is still an interesting design problem that persists even now. How do I get players to learn which tools they should use when both tools are very naturally very similar? Is it worth having these tools be very similar? Are there ways I could diversify them better? I'll have to get back to you on that one. It's sort of ironic in a way that a main design pillar for this game was multi-purpose design, and here I actually created a sort of inverse to that, which I guess you could call something like same-purpose design. <laughs> So there's a lot of really important stuff that didn't get done in time. No menu, no tutorial, no ending, an incredibly rushed level design. As a result, I'm actually really surprised how well the game did in the jam, but I think that speaks to its longer term potential and the payoff of putting so much time into the player and spear behaviour. It's really tough to know what I should have sacrificed to get more of the crucial elements into the game. I think I made a lot of really good choices in regards to time and prioritisation, and the biggest bottleneck was honestly probably just my ability to code fast and stay focused. Sometimes that's just how it is, 48 hours is not a lot of time. However, I do think you could make the argument, in terms of the jam at least, that spear throwing and super jumping was probably the biggest time waste. It served basically all of the same functions as the stab, and the differences were subtle and mostly about feel. I know some people who played the game will hear me say that and think, gosh no, the super jump was the best part, but when you imagine in that space of time, I could have done much better level design and really used all of the multi-purpose sphere mechanics, and not had an issue with this same purpose design thing in the sphere, I think I might have ended up with a more solid final entry, but it is very difficult to say. Overall, I'm really proud of this entry, and I'm really excited to explore this game idea further. And other than some of the more major missing stuff, I think it's actually a really reflective snapshot of me as a designer right now, both in its flaws and in its successes. And it's really interesting for me to compare all the jam games I've made, and see where I've improved, and also where I still need to improve. That's going to be everything on Pokepoke for now, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. If you enjoyed this video, you should know it wouldn't be possible at all if it weren't for the support of all these lovely people you're seeing on screen now. If you want to be one of them, you can get some cool goodies as shown on the left by popping over to patreon.com forward slash seanjs. A huge shout out in no particular order to Mark Lintz, Lewis R. Pereira, Doan Techben, Brandon Kelly, Dan, Inner Mule, Chris Maher, Andreas Tabak, Gummy Tainman, James Grumley, Badia Yahya, Mark Day, Harold Guidry, Matt Coat, Nathaniel Walsh, Fisk McTaggart, Nick Slavish, Stephen Hagen, Henry Wirtz, Michael Ward, Jason McMillan, Seanathan, Crispy, Owen Morgan, Zenan May, Bowser the Dog, TJ, and Patrick Guffey. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.